What's up guys, it's Hunter Road the God Slayer, and you are here for the first of several tutorials on the First Descendant. These tutorials will be taking place from the perspective of a free-to-play player, one who refuses to purchase anything in the game. We are going to go through a lot of different subjects together here today, well, throughout the course of these tutorials. And I have to specify that I am going again from the perspective of a free to play player because there will be certain tips, strategies and mindsets that I will I will suggest you have that will only apply to someone who refuses to buy their way past any of this stuff. So with that being said, let's jump into the game. So of course in the beginning of the game you are going to be given the option to pick three people one of three people viessa is being one of them uh ajax and then i believe uh i know ajax is one of them viessa is the other and i think the other is either enzo or lepic and it's lepic uh Pick whatever you choose. Um, I chose Viesa. Then you'll follow the story. Just run to wherever the markers tell you. Talk to whoever they tell you to talk to. Go where they tell you to go. They're going to teach you the basics of you get three weapons. You'll have a reactor. You'll have four external components that you'll basically, you'll be switching these out as you get better versions of them. I would suggest going for, uh, I would suggest going for getting this defense stat up and your firearm attack stat up, uh, making sure that those, and if you can try and keep your max shields going up, uh, this will this stuff right here will be it, it'll be dependent on what characters you're playing as and what your builds will require but just make sure that you're trying to keep like whatever level area you're in try to make sure your weapons and we'll get into that in a second but try to make sure your weapons and, and your components and reactor are typically the same around either two levels higher or about one to two levels lower than you, the average area that you're in. Um, mastery rank, first and foremost, this is going to be one of the key components to your power simply because of these right here, the c capacity slots and capa the capacity and the slots, capacity and slots for both weapon and descendants because your goal is to get to capacity is, is get to mastery rank 20 that's your goal your goal is to get to 20 because after 20 you stop getting upgrades to your module and uh weapon to your descendant and weapon module slots and, and capacities because you see where it says 50 on both of these after that, it's just going to say 50 on both all across the board. You stop getting increases here. Now, you'll, you'll keep getting increases right here alongside these, but you'll stop getting increases to those shaper stabilizers as well. Shape stabilizers. Um, usually, I, that'll, that'll also drop. That'll actually stop earlier than that. That'll stop at level 15. Level 15 is when you'll stop getting this, and then level 20 is when you stop getting these. And then you'll get these on up i believe until yeah until you just straight max out and then you'll you'll max out at around i believe yeah about 150 on these two 600 there all right so first things first your mastery rank you're gonna you're gonna level those by of course 
getting exp raising your weapon proficiencies which is basically like your weapons levels you get you get those through kills and things of that nature and of course leveling up your descendant you know you level up your descendant to a max of 40. this can be this can be reset and you can re-level the descendant again by putting a module on the descendant over here but we'll get into that later we're just going to start by letting you know that mastery rank is something that you want to always try and keep going forward towards that's the beginning all right when it comes to weapons understand that this game's ammo system works different than 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 other games in the sense that these ammo systems these ammo types are like pools of ammo so like for instance this one your sniper rifles tend to take high power rounds uh so does your like your grenade launchers and stuff like that uh your assault rifles and your submachine guns tend to take general rounds your hand cannons uh tactical rifle well your hand cannons uh what other ones do it like hand cannons scout rifles they take impact rounds and then special rounds are usually for tactical rifles and uh they generally they they generally are for tactical rifles you don't usually see them anywhere else but these four ammo types will drop in the world and if you've got two weapons on that use the same ammo type whatever weapon you shoot from is going to take from the pool of both of those weapons just understand that which is why i generally would say try to keep a weapon of of you know try to keep all three of your weapons having different ammo types um but i mainly would say keep yourself a close range weapon something that can hit hard kill fast because you don't want enemies to 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 be in your face for too long because in this game, your melee is literally a single hit. It's a single hit button. There's no real melee combat to the game for real. And the melee is me is merely meant for you to be able to just get, basically make space. This is in, in every way, shape, or form a shooter first. Looter second. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have something heavy hitting, that hits hard, that you can get rid of the enemies quickly from. Then you want you a nice mid-range assault light weapon, something that's automatic, that can pump out a lot of a lot of bullets, and you know you can go for maybe a machine gun if you like machine guns. I like assault rifles, or if, you, if you're into submachine guns, also understand that these weapons all have. If you go into their details, they all have effective range. This is what's going to decide how far away you need to be shooting with this with this weapon. If you're going to be shooting again long range, close range, like for instance, we can look at the effective range on this weapon. It's 25 meters. Anything be anything below 30 meters is considered a, a close range weapon. Anything 30 and up, I would consider a mid range weapon. Once you get to 45, 50, now we're talking long range. Now we're talking long range weaponry. All right. And so you want to make sure of that because that's going to also decide the way you play the class. Because if all of your weapons are effective close range, then you're going to be playing this class very in the face of the enemy, in the face of, you know, you're going to be playing in the thick of things a lot. But if you're if all of your weaponry is mid to long range, you're not going to want the enemy to be anywhere near you because you don't have any good close range effectiveness outside of maybe your your own descendant abilities. But the idea is to try to synergize your your descendant abilities, your weapons, and then the way you favor to play the game as a whole, all to, to make one unique build. So that's weaponry, and it's broad sense like this is what you want to aim for when you're looking for weaponries looking for distances looking for you know because again the dps and all that will be affected later on as we get into other systems but you just want to look for the main thing of a close range long range and a 
mid-range assault weapon that allows you to mow things down quickly. All right? Cool. All right. Now, when it comes to reactors, reactors are the base of what your special skills or like your 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 your, your super abilities, your super abilities, this is going to be the base of the power of those things. You get four abilities. You get a first, second, third, and your fourth is considered, like I guess, your ultimate. But you also have a uh, a uh, what's what I'm looking for here? A passive. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make sure that we want to make sure that whatever our our powers are, that we have on a reactor that matches those powers. So, like for instance, I have a girl who uses ice. So, and, and there's the ice icon, and we want to make sure that we have that ice icon, making sure we're matching on those things. Now, you'll, you'll, there'll be rare times when you might have one of these things that are just so strong that no matter which one they are, like, for instance, there are certain things like, for instance, uh, let me see if I can find one that's actually, like, just stronger than this, period. Like, you'll have certain, like, You'll have certain ones of these, like that. Like for instance, there are stats on this one. It's level sixty-six that are just stronger, period, than the one I'm wearing. But the reason why I'm wearing this one is because it it, it affects all of my stats. Because you see where it says chill skill power ratio boost. That's affecting all of my chill abilities. And then fusion, which is three of out of the four of my abilities, are being affected by those. So, like, we'll get into this in a second as well. But let's go to our Descendant. And as you can see, these are the powers. Right? And if you notice by the word chill, on all four of them, it says chill. But it also says fusion, fusion, fusion. And on the fourth, it says tech. That is the secondary... That is the secondary attribute to each of all... to. Because the, the attributes of all four of those abilities is freeze or chill. But there's a secondary attribute to all four of them. And that secondary attribute is fusion to the first three and then tech to the fourth. All of your different descendants will have this. Your goal is to try and get that skill power boost ratio to be... To basically get the first one, which is the chill skill. So it boosts all four because it's, because all four have the chill attribute. But then your your goal is to try and get that second one to be either the tech or the fusion, whatever one that you want the powers to be boosted by, because it's going to boost all four of them by 0.2%. I mean, by 0.2. But then it's going to boost whatever one that it says, like, for instance, it says fusion, it's going to boost the fusion versions of the, the fusion ones, an extra two. So my first, second, and third are actually getting four X, a 0.4 X boost, while my fourth is only getting a two X boost, you see? So you wanna, you wanna, uh, you wanna kinda bend around and, 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 and see which ones are giving you what you need for the abilities you use most. And when you see up there, you'll start seeing it on the rare versions of these when they start dropping. When you see like where it says optimization condition, that means when you're using the weapon, not because the weapon is in your inventory or because it's in your slots. This power boost where it says skill power 140, that will only apply to you when you have the weapon in your hands. So just remember that. Only when you have the weapon in your hands. All right. These, of course, will give you. Uh, there, are, there are four of them. There's the, their auxiliary power. There's the sensor. There's the memory, and then there's the processor. And you can come in here and you can target look at at each one of these. And again, I would say prioritize defense stats. Like I have defense here, defense here. Defense here. Prioritize defense stats because in this game, it's not like Warframe where you can jump and zip around, and because of that, the enemy's accuracy is is you know, drops drastically. In this game, that's not, it doesn't work that way. Enemies are going to hit you, 
and they're gonna hit you a lot. So you need to have a base defense that can that can tank a lot of this a lot of these blows. And that is where this defense stat is gonna come into play. You need to make sure that this defense stat is high. And you want and you want to make sure that you're not over capping on certain things. So like for instance, well, when I say over capping, I mean you don't want to go to the point to where you're you're wasting a lot of your 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 your, your stat allocations. The defense I have here is 113.9. The cap is negative 80%, right? Now, there's no way for me to, to to calculate this, so I can only go by what the numbers on the screen are saying. So, effectively speaking, anything at my level, I have reached the damage cap by which I can I can mitigate. Fine. All right, fine. That means I don't necessarily need to, to worry about raising this stat anymore. I will continue to do so just in case you end up getting hit with certain things that drop your defense. That way, if even if it does drop your defense, if you can keep it above that 80 that 80% you can still get max defensive mitigations because there might be things in this game that you'll get hit with that'll drop your defense. And if they wanted to drop my defense to the point to where I'm no longer mitigating max damage that I can, the 80%, they would have to drop it below this number. They would have to drop it below the 80% number and they have to go through 130, 113. So they'll have to go through about 20 or so of my defense in order to drop it down below the 80 cap. Then of course you have your max shield. And you'll look again on here where it says your shields. And your shields don't seem to have a real cap to them. Uh, but at the same time, you do want to have that, that defense because that defense will also like kind of like work bet, work well with the shields in terms of how much damage is being done to the shield. So you want to have those two in tandem. Uh, this again will be dictated mainly by these, by your, uh, as you can see, 4987. Skill power here is 4987. So, you know, they're going to be dictated mainly by this. Uh, the numbers you see below the actual abilities. And so, yeah, those ability, those numbers you see at the bottom there are basically the numbers just for the ability themselves and not the entire, not the entirety of my skill power. My average skill power is at the top there. So now that you kind of understand that and you, you'll see a lot of these different like sensor memory, we've been through this already, uh, memory processor and uh, power. And again, you can just go in there and spread, you know, look at these things and, and like, and like look at them in specific uh specific ones so you don't get confused as to which one goes where because these are always go in the same spots but now that you kind of understand where your weapons are where your upgrades are going to go now we're going to get into the mods this is the next thing you your descendant and each of your weapons will have a total of, your weapons have a total of 10, and your descendant will have a total of 12. These 10 will be normal, then you will have a one for your melee mod, and this melee mod is one of the things you wanna level up first. You wanna do this first, but we'll get to the leveling up part in a second, but this, is your melee mod and this is your skill module this skill module is every descendant has a specific mod that is only for them and what it usually does is it usually changes one of their abilities to be a certain way or or things like that nature like for instance her her uh hers is called uh let me go ahead and bring it oh there it is cold-bloodedness it is vs's exclusive mod and it increases my skill power, it decreases my skill cost and my skill cooldowns, but my Frost Roads ability that allows me to run real fast and leave ice behind won't work. 
So I have to give, I had to basically give away an ability to get better cooldowns and better power from, uh, forget basically to juice up for all my other three abilities, which in, in essence is fine because in all honesty, the, the, the speed boost, it can come in clutch every now and then, but it's not something that you're going to, you know, mainly what that does, what it does is it, it slows people down that run over your ice, that run over your ice trails, but you'll have enough ice power to kind of like keep people at bay for the most part. But again, if it's not for you, then, you know, you don't have to have, have to use it, but it, and the mod cost is pretty sick. It's 15 just to start. Like I haven't even leveled this bad boy yet. And it's 15 just to start which is out of control, but again, even something like this, your mods having a high cost at the very beginning, it's all to push you to do certain things in the cash shop. It's all push. It's all pushing you towards trying to find ways around it using quick methods like paying for it. But we're gonna, we're gonna, again, we're, we're, we're not doing that. We're, we're sticking to our guns over here at Armin Relic Gaming. We can stick to our guns over here. So let's do this. All right, so we know that you get 12 mods on this character, not including, I mean, including the skill in the uh, melee, and every one of these get 10, right? Cool. What I am also going to show you is where you're gonna get these mod slots or this mod capacity from, because as you can see, my mod capacity right now is at 60, but that 60 isn't just coming from one place. That 60 is coming from here, because I'm getting mod capacity here. That 60 is also coming from this, because this mod, when you level it up, you see where it says max capacity up? This mod is going to start at zero. You see, this is a norm. This is another melee mod. It's going to start at zero. As you level it up, it's going to it's going to add that number to this. So. You want to do that. You want to get that up, and then you want to add, and it's going to add that number to this. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do to do this is when you're done talking to everybody in Albion and whatnot, there's going to be about two people that you're going to want to get real used to seeing. The first dude is going to be over here. This pretty boy over here. This pretty boy right here. Welcome. You're here for modules, right? He's going to be the one to allow you to enhance, dismantle, and combine mods. I wouldn't worry about combining mods right now because that's more for when you just have an overabundance of them. Right now, what I want you to worry about is two things. First and foremost, dismantling. You're going to need a thing called Kuiper. It's this right here. You see where my mouse is hovering up right here on the top right? Kuiper shards. You're going to need these. These are what allow you to enhance these mods. And of course, these mods for all your guns. You're gonna need lots of it. And I mean an absorbent amount of it. Hey there, what can I help you with? Because just to enhance, like for instance, just to enhance this another time, 25,000. You know, 15,000. Uh, that one's maxed out. 46,000 because some of these will have higher rates depending on the power of it like this is a this is a ultimate mod so the ultimate mods is going to take a lot more to raise them up than like a normal mod would so you're going to need lots of that now this gold you're going to get a lot of this because you're going to be running around the game just getting tons of gold you'll be fine with gold but kuiper dismantling your mods when you do this Go down here to this little check to this little thing here. It says select duplicate mods. This is the one thing I will say about this game that it does have that's over Warframe. If you click this, it will find all of the mods in your inventory that have multiples, and it will basically get rid of all your multiples, and you'll get a chunk of Kyber shards. And it'll say a valuable, a valuable, uh, a high value module is among the the mods selected. Do you want to just continue? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because the mods, if you, like for instance, if you put a mod on her,
And so you won't have to, again, you won't have to worry about your duplicate mods being like lost to you because even though you get rid of the duplicates, oh, you won't have to worry about special mods being lost to you because even if you put a mod on her, like let's say I put a mod on, on Biesa and then I switch to another d d d descendant, I can still put that same mod on another descendant as well. So it's not like these mods are only for the singular character that you have them on. They, they, they span across all characters. So there's really no need to have more than one of a specific mod, of any specific mod, to be quite honest. So getting rid of them is, again, they're more useful to you as Kuiper than just sitting in your inventory for no reason. So you're gonna want to do, you want to do that, but then you're also, of course, gonna, you're gonna come here and enhance. The first thing you're gonna enhance is any mod that allows you to do like a, a your melee mod. You're gonna find any melee mod, you're gonna put it in there and you're gonna level it up. Doesn't matter which one it is. If you like the punch one, you can do the punch one. I like the kick one, doesn't matter. You'll be given one for like a, a short sword. You'll be given one for double claws. Doesn't matter which one it is because the melees are practically useless in this game. But you're gonna pick one, level it up and slap it in there because that's 10 extra mod capacity. You wanna get that. Now that you have that, you're gonna be looking at this girl. This is gonna be another person you're gonna be talking to a lot. Matter of fact, matter of fact, you're gonna talk to this girl and you're gonna make sure you talk to this girl every time you play and you're gonna make sure you do it at the end of your playthrough. So if you're playing for like four or five hours and you're like, okay, I'm about done playing the game for the day. You do not log off this game until you come over here. And you come over here and you start getting timers going. You start getting some of these timers going. Like, whatever it is. Like, for instance, I got this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. All right. I'm going to grab that. Because I got four hours and 50 minutes for this fucking thing to craft. Nine hours for 20 of these. One hour and 30 minutes for 60 of these. You you, you got to, yeah. Just get, just get shit crafted. Have something crafted. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to, like, the long timers. Have something. Have something crafted. And make sure you, you can only get up a maximum of five things to craft at once, which I think is retarded as well, but that's what they do. And so make sure you have five things crafting at, at, as, as, as often as you possibly can. And always make sure you have your longest crafts starting as soon as possible and make sure that they're up and going no matter what. So that when you log out the game and you go about your day living on this good green earth, doing things that normal people do like go out and, and and have friends and family and and working jobs and all those other good things that actually take time from your day time that this game would love to rob you of yeah you want to make sure that those things are going so that when you come back into the game those things will be basically crafted and done you want to do that you want to make sure that is happening all right now those are the two places that you're going to be visiting more than anything else. Of course, you'll be you'll be told you'll be seeing these little icons that you see floating around. Some of them are going to be glowing, and you're going to go to them. Like you'll be talking to this guy a bunch. Of, this guy here will be giving you kind of tips and stuff like that, and you'll be talking to him a bunch. But those two down there are the ones you're going to be seeing a lot, and they're going to be the key to your progression in terms of power. Now, this dude is going to give you boss fights, but we're not going to get into boss fights. Uh, uh, we're not gonna get into the big boss fights in this in this video. This video is first just to get you started. Now, with those two things, the last thing we're gonna talk about in this video is this place, the Prime Hands. This is going to be where you get your mastery rank, all because you fill this bar up does not mean that you have gotten your mastery rank. You might fill it up to the top and it'll say, hey, mastery rank something's available. That means it's just available. You have to come here, Go into here, click the mastery rank up, and then it'll give you how much EXP you gotten to get to that point. You'll click and hold that long press to get that, and you'll go through a nice little sexy cutscene of your character getting mastery rank. And you'll do that over and over again every mastery rank you get. And you and you want to you're gonna want to do it every time you get a chance. You're gonna want to do that. Because again, that is key to your capacity and slots for both weapons and uh, descendants. Remember, the soft cap is 15, the hard cap of, of for, for the power is 20. 
once you get the once you get the mastery rank twenty, it really don't mean shit anymore in terms of like you gaining power from your mastery rank. So you want to climb, 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 climb on that. All right. So that is the introductory tutorial to the game. You now understand all of the. You now understand and, and see all the systems that work that deal with your uh, your actual character specific progression. And what we'll go into in the next uh, in the next tutorial will be more of an in depth look at these different systems and uh, showing you how to as a free player to navigate this stuff so that you don't end up in a situation where you want to quit cuz this game can make you want to quit if you don't if you don't come at it with the right idea and and and, and mindset so i'll see you guys in the next one i'm a really the godslayer i'm a really gaming we out of here